Hello, good afternoon. So, uh, University of Piraeus is in Greece. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know if uh, I can translate it in Greek if you want my presentation. Uh, so it's, it's really a pleasure being here. I've been uh, with some of the audience, actually um, uh, met in Greece 10 years ago when we had a research conference, actually. And um, someone, uh, some people might have seen uh, something like that. So what I'm going to, uh, to present is, uh, sorry, some of the slides, yeah. So one of the things I would like to discuss today is how to help designers, learning designers. And I know that some of you um, might see people just go to the Moodle, just choose the topics, choose the activities, uh, then assign them to resources, etc., and then the course is there. Some people might say, okay, I might use a tool like uh, associated with the design method like learning designer from UCL. Or we have seen new tools like Data Cursor, for example. Uh, hello, guys. And so what I would like to show you is an evidence-based uh, design method supported by a tool uh, that came out of research, of years of research, and that actually guides the designers develop, design, not develop, design a course. This, co this tool is course Cadmos. I will give you um, more details about that. But let's start. First of all, designing a Moodle course. Is it a science? Is it science or is it art? Both. It's like, you know, Etcher, you know, a very famous graphic designer and that try to create using imagination, creativity, and geometry. This is one of, the, of these. So since we are, when we design, we are using a lot of theory behind it and uh, pedagogical strategies, uh, lots of years of research about how to, uh, people learn. But also we need the creativity. We don't need uh, prefabricated courses. We might use prefabricated courses and then reuse them and add our own style. How can we support this? So I'm talking about learning design. It has a little bit difference about instructional design. I'm not going to go into details, but what we care mainly in learning design is which activities we are going to use associated with goals, which resources will support or services will support these activities and how we orchestrate, you know, the flow of that. So we want, we want to answer specific questions of what the students are going to do, when, and how. And all that in order to promote positive learning experiences. So that's it. Now, we have tools. We have, for example, the pedagogical will from the one with the ty typology of UCL Diana Lorillard, the ABCLD. We have also Bloom, you know, in order to support all this. But is it enough just to know the theory and also have a great tool, a very usable tool? Yes and no. And I'm saying yes and no because I remember one discussion that we had uh, here actually a presentation by uh, Martin Duyama saying that the percentage of tools that are being used or activities that are being used in Moodle are, you know, very specific. We do not use all the different features that we offer. But why is that? Probably because we have not tried to combine the activities and the tools with the, um, with the goals and associated learning activities. So it's not enough. But are we using a common language in learning design? Do we develop, when I ask you to give me a learning, a lesson plan, or a learning design, are we all going to give the same thing? No. So we don't have a common framework. We have bits and bytes, we have templates, but not a common language. Actually, 
We can see in Merlot they have different things. In um, other, um, the MOOCs have different style. Other people are using other PDF style. Different, different templates. So we cannot compare them. We cannot take it and use it and reuse it and then put it in, in real practice after that. But architects, which is very close to design, are, have common language. They have also tools. So they start from sketches. They go into very detailed designs and also designs in layers. The plumping, you know, where there will be the windows, the doors. And so they, they do not start just flat. They start with the design and up to that, they put different layers of different detail. And then, do they stop there? No. You, as a customer, you want to see how this might look like. So they go a bit before, I, 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 they make a step ahead, and they create rendering of a 3D model of how this would look, another view. So they have different views. But so why don't we have that in learning design? So why should we start with a word, different templates, and then take it and put it in a tool, in a Moodle, and then create the course? So that was the inspiration of actually creating learning design tools. I, tell, I mentioned some of that. There is 20 years back, we tried to standardize this process with IMSLD. Some of you might remember that. And based on that, they created the tools or tried to create these tools. But designers, teachers, uh, and novice, especially novice practitioners, they need graphical stuff. It's okay to have forms, but they need more graphical stuff to play around. And also, what they want is to, fast, to, get, to close the gap between design and deployment or enactment. To take the design as I saw it and then put it back, put it uh, into a platform and realize it. Not with all the resources, no. Resources you can create it in authoring tools and then assemble that. Or the quiz might be very platform specific. But at least the skeleton and most of the details will be there. And also, if we have this kind of tools, we can reuse these designs. We can take that, adopt something, play with that, and then re-enact uh, re it in our own style. So we need this kind of tools. And this is actually the trend at the moment. So let me present you how we, de how we support all this with a, call, with a tool called Cadmus. So what we do is we exactly support what we are talking about, is that we want to have different views, different layers, exactly as architects are doing. Also, to be a stepwise uh, approach in order to guide them to make very specific decisions at each specific view and at each specific uh, um, process. Traceability, what you did and why, what you changed. And of course, to enable redesign, sharing, and also enactment of the designs. I put, you know, I promise a lot. Let's see if this works. So this is in this way, you will see, we divide the design in two view, main views. One is the conceptual, when we select the, the, the activities and the resources, but not playing around with preconditions, with visibility tools, with uh, rules, or grading uh, rules that one flow the other. So one is the conceptual, basically like the way of a syllabus, and then you go and say, now let's see how we orchestrate that. In order to give you an idea, I will, my assistant will give you some if the video, no, the video is not working. Why is that? Welcome to CADMOS. CADMOS is your go-to graphical learning design tool, tailor-made for educators like you. Whether you're a seasoned educator or just starting, CADMOS makes creating lesson plans and seamlessly integrating them into Moodle a breeze. 
Let's dive in. You've got three fantastic options to kickstart your online course design journey. Start from scratch to let your creativity run wild. Craft a course design that's as unique as your teaching style and content. Use a template to explore an array of pedagogical e-learning strategy templates. Find the perfect match for your subject and goals with ease. And for those with already designed courses, even in a Moodle format, our import feature ensures a seamless transition. Cadmos advocates a systematic design approach, ensuring every step is traceable in the process. You can craft learner-centered designs for collaborative work, facilitated by an instructor. Begin by shaping your course into a conceptual model. Add topics and activities associated with a learning resource. See real-time analytics come to life for your design. Simultaneously, Cadmos crafts a flow model to visualize your course's structure. Need to make changes? No worries. Return to the conceptual model, tweak, and watch the flow model adapt seamlessly. This dynamic feature lets you determine the ideal order for learning activities and define types, preconditions, rules, and goals for each activity. Sharing and reusing your course designs is now easier than ever. Simply export them in Word format or for use on various platforms, including Moodle. But that's not all. At the end, you can assess your design and decision-making with our handy rubric. Cadmos is here to empower your teaching journey. Start creating, innovating, and inspiring with confidence. Join the Cadmos community today. I will say the same thing yeah, later on. So what we, why we design in different views? For example, when we are talking about the first thing that we think, and actually I had the discussion uh, during lunch, that at the beginning, all the teachers, all the novice designers say, I have a PowerPoint slides, I have a PDF, I have a quiz, I want to put them. They don't think about activities, they think about resources. So, however, resources are associated with activities that the students should do, and also they have specific types. So, we support this. So you, you think of a type, you know, Bloom Taxonomy could be MSLD types, whatever, but we have Bloom Taxonomy here. And then you associate with the activity. You don't like the resource, you take out the resource, you change it, but you keep the same skeleton, the same structure. So this is why we are talking about reusability. And then, while you are creating, you see like in the learning designer, you see the analytics, you see the type of the course you are creating. It's more assessment driven. No, it's more remembering driven. And you need this. And for the instructional designers, when you, there is also a specific pie that shows if you have described all the details of the resource that you are going to do. Because sometimes you design something and you give it to a second team, teammate, and that you, in order to upload the resource, and you need to facilitate this. And so we keep some uh, extra properties for that. I'm not going to say more about that. And then automatically, no, we don't create a second view. Automatically, from the topics, we have a new view, which is the orchestration. In a swim lane, which is, we, we don't care about resource anymore. We care about what the student or the groups are going to do. And also, where the instructor is going to come and facilitate this process. And in this way, if I want to say no, and also I can change, I see the time, the duration. No, it's not okay, I can change it. And then goes back automatically and updates the conceptual model. But you are working here. It's like, I just think about how architects are working. They are seeing, they are looking at a specific view, not everything in one page. And of course we can, here at this one, we can add height conditions, grade conditions, all of the things that Moodle or other platforms are supporting. But again, we have a learning design. We don't have a course. What we care is a course, because this is why we want to close the gap and save time, basically. And exactly. 
So the tool actually, of course, creates Cadmus files, but also creates package everything in, into Moodle. It works perfectly with the current version of Moodle and also previous ones. But I've, as you, if you can see here, there is a very important thing that we do not only open a Cadmus file, CDN files, we can open an MBZ, a Moodle file, and we can X-ray in this into annotations. Because in a Moodle, we don't know, we have forum, we have pages, we have that, but we don't know exactly what type of this. So you take this and you annotate, and then you have the same design, but, but in a common language. And then you can change it, package it, and put it online. So this is a preview. So in the tool, when you click the preview, you see how it looks like, exactly as it is. So we have this dream of sharing and using courses. Actually, Moodle Networks, actually, it has been developed and designed in this. But if you go to Moodle Net, you will see just the course and the MBZ file. Why not having the MBZ file? Why not having the description of the course, you know, in a more in illustrative way, not as a, either preview or the f different two views, you know, the conceptual or the flow, because this will be help the decision maker to say, yes, it works for me or not, or take it back, change it, and then put it back. But we don't stay there. We have the visualizations, we have the different views, but we do also quality self-check. So what we care is, okay, I believe that my course is excellent. My design is super great. Not the content, the design. But can you validate that? So in the tool, we have implemented a rubric with specific quality indicators based on all the basic standards like quality matters and all that, so that either the designer does a self-check, so the course, the MBZ file, is associated with a self-check, or someone else can take it, grade it, and give you back what you want. So are we close to this dream? I feel yes. So this is the vision. If we want open learning design principles, we want common languages. We want, of course, repositories. We want tools for quality checking. And of course, the community to discuss, share, and, um, and facilitate all this process. So as I tell, join the movement. The tool is open. It's a beta. Uh, we have a beta version upload. So you can, with your Google account, you can or create one. You know, you can just sign in and use it freely. Thank you very much. We we'll open some minutes for questions if some of you have them. First, thank you for the talk. Um, does the tool provide any like accessibility ratings? Like if you have your design and then it'll give you a rating on how accessible that is? There is no, no. The, um, the rubric has accessibility, but we have not implemented that because basically this is about the content and the platform. We are talking about the design. So we don't care much about the resources which is something else. So yes, in the quality criteria, we ask this, if your content is, or your design is UDL you know, uh, based, but we cannot check it. So we, this is something like you know, the ones that um, tools, other tools are doing better than what we are doing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are you planning to make it um, downloadable and uh, open source? So it is open. Now it is open. Uh, anyway, so. Maybe some forms of well, we don't know exactly how we'll do, mm -hmm. but for the moment, and especially for the Moodle community, you know, we want to keep it the way it is. Now, 
Open source is an, another discussion about how it is. Open, definitely, and definitely there will be an open version for that. And if you see, we do not have any constraints, how many designs you are going to do, what will be the export, etc. No, you just download the CDM, the MBZ, and that's it, go. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I want to know how the rubric, quality rubric, uh, works. Uh, and if you have, for example, very bad <laughs> um, grading or something, uh, if the platform uh, suggests you how to improve your course or something. Thank you. First of all, I mean, this gives me a very good uh, the opportunity to tell you that there are several publications with the tool. So we have a very formal process of, for learning design with the tool, but even without any tool. So um, the, the satisfaction rate is high. You know. Of course, there are you know, problems. I mean, it takes time. So this is why we say a tool by itself might be great, but if you understand the philosophy, because I told you about the philosophy behind it, it's a, it's a design method, this is where we give some emphasis on that. So definitely, you know, it needs some time to understand a little bit the process. But the tool, you know, if you know the process, then the tool is easy. Um, so the quality now, it's a big topic. You know, what is the quality of a design, learning design? So we have, um, if this is another talk, you know, I will give you. So the indicators that you saw, it's based on another research that we have. So we have our own proprietary, you know, uh, quality rubric for designs. Um, and based on that, there will be uh, next year, probably, if I am here, uh, there will be the AI checker that will be based on that and more automatic, not AI, but automatic decision tools like a bot. Um, so we have, it's based on two deep basic standards. One is the quality matters. It's the US basic, no, it's not standard, but it seems to be, you know, the golden standard in the US. And the, European, the open ed app, which is the European one. So based on that, uh, we adapt this in and trimmed out like the accessibility and all that only for the issues that we care about the design, not the course as a whole. So this is how we ended up with this. And also we added our own features, you know, as a philosophy. Any other questions? Is that from the learning design itself? Is that like the, have you been looking at different learning designs like ABC uh, learning design or? At the moment, the typology is based on Bloom. We have to discuss with uh, Diane. I mean, I know Professor Lori Large several years ago, and I have to discuss with the UCL team how to do that. I mean, it's a matter of association. It's not much on that. But for the moment, because we wanted to make it open without discussing with other teams, no, I mean, going into details about the way of exploiting this, we said we are going with Bloom. But it's, it's a matter of you know, technical uh, easiness, you know, which is a binding thing. Thank you. Thank you.